Hey, what's up reefers? Today we're gonna take a look at the 45 gallon mixed reef and then we're gonna focus a little bit more on the reef inhabitants that I have not talked about recently. But first, if you're in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, the local reef club WAMAS is gonna have its annual frag fest next Sunday, July 23rd in McLean, Virginia. There will be fragging demos, free frags, vendors, and a presentation on the Triton method by Joe, the owner of Unique Corals and Manhattan Aquarium. Since this is usually the largest attending meeting of the year, it is only open to WAMAS members. Membership is only $20, and I believe this is the best $20 I've ever spent in this hobby. If you're interested in learning more, I'll have the link to WAMAS form in the video description below. Okay, let's see what's new. I noticed something really odd this past few weeks. Although still considered healthy, my LPS like the Elegance and the Gold Torch have not opened up as fully as before. Also odd is that I would see random bald spots on my Monipora caps and the 24K Lepto series. It was especially bad on the Lepto. The top portion is really pale. It's almost like bleaching. But the underside is still a beautiful gold. Well, come to think of it, my Radeon light was acting a bit strange a few weeks ago, so I will double check the light intensity after filming this video. Speaking of LPS, a few weeks ago I noticed that the Space Invader Pactinius skeletons are showing at the tips. I was freaking out on Instagram, but with your help, I concluded that it may have been from alkalinity swings and maybe too much flow. So just in case, I moved the frag from the high flow corner to the low flow frag rack. And I also did my best to keep the alkalinity stable. And this includes measuring out the calc that I dosed into the ATO container so that it has the same consistency every single time. I also started to aggressively feed the frag, hoping that it would help with the recovery. So far, it seems to be happier. While the skeletons are still protruding at the tips, the frag itself has grown. So fingers crossed. All right, let's talk about some good news. The nine green chromas are all still alive and kicking. They have all grown up quite a bit, and they would always group up right in front of the tank when someone approaches. It was a joy to see. I feed these guys in small portion at least three times a day. That, in combination of having a mean fish in the tank, seems to keep them busy enough to start picking each other off. Time will tell if I could have long-term success with these fellas. In the last update video, I mentioned that I was pretty concerned about the Derisa clam. I'm happy to report that after moving it directly under the light, like some of you recommended, its vibrant pattern returned to the mantle and it is once again happy as a clam. I am looking into target feeding phytoplankton mix just to supplement its diet a little more. Alright, I'm about to hit you with a lot of quick random updates. Are you ready? The red plating sponge is doing amazingly well and it has almost doubled in size. It sent off a runner to the main rock and it is encroaching on the lepto. I'm not too worried though since the sponge seems to be pretty easy to peel off. I was also able to locate the tiny red porcelain crab in the last video. It has been very elusive and waving his little fans in crevices. So yes, this little guy is still alive and well and I have been target feeding it as well, just in case. The zoas continue to do well, most have really spread and enlarged in size. Once I cleared out my frag rack, I think I would do a round of fragging. I am ready to try some of the more colorful and expensive zoas in this tank. Same thing with the acans. Since they have always done well in this tank, I am ready to step it up and try some of the more colorful mini colonies. Here's a newbie mistake for you. I tried to remove the rainbow bubble tip anemone because it was getting too large and it was staining the zoas and manipora cap. But I underestimated how deep and large its foot was, so I ended up ripping the anemone pretty badly. Writing it off, I just started ripping chunks of it out of the rock and just tossed them. Well, a week later, look who peeked out. Apparently, a small piece of an anemone survived, and it is now recovering in the same spot. I guess I'll just have to think of a different approach next time. If you look here, you see a Patterson cleaner shrimp dancing on my giant scarlet hermit, Gaston. Yes, I glued green star polyps onto Gaston's shell, and yes, I named a scarlet hermit. So I started off with three of these little shrimps, but quickly lost one within three days. The second one was lost after two weeks, but this little guy is thriving and he has already doubled in size. He will always swim to the front of the tank to greet me, and I would always hand feed him some food just to make sure he's getting enough. This little guy is definitely one of my favorite inhabitants of this tank. But speaking of shrimps, the cleaner shrimp is also a crowd pleaser. Check out Joy getting a manicure by this little guy. I have not had long term luck with conks, but since my sand bed was looking a little crusty, I picked up a sand tiger conk to keep things tidy. So far he's doing a great job and I will be supplementing his diet with noris. 
The humble red mushroom is one of my favorite corals in this tank. Some reefers hate mushroom because they spread so fast, but I love these guys. Also, speaking of mushrooms, my orange protectus is very slow spreading, but it has finally grew from two polyps to four polyps after almost a year. Okay, Reef Squad, if you made it this far, you are seriously hardcore and I salute you. I'm gonna need a drink of water, so I will be closing this vlog right here. Enjoy the week, and I will see you next Sunday morning at 9.30am sharp.